Judah. Thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Before the traditions and heritage of the Israelite bloodline was hijacked by the heathens and the serpent seed, before the heathens transformed our culture into a religion, our fathers led their household under the statutes of the Most High. It was a custom of the fathers to gather their children to them before they transitioned to the afterlife. Adam, Seth, Noah, Jacob, and many other righteous men followed this custom, including the twelve sons of Jacob. Judah gathered his children to him before he transitioned to the afterlife. The copy of the words of Judah, what things he spake to his sons before he died. They gathered themselves together, therefore, and came to him, and he said to them, Hearken, my children, to Judah your father. The prophecies Judah revealed to his children and descendants concerning their life and future certainly came to pass. Before we hear of the final commands and message Judah had for his children, let us find out who is Judah. Judah is the fourth son born to Jacob and Leah. His mother named him Judah because when she saw she conceived another son, she said she would praise the Most High. Judah means praise. I was the fourth son born to my father Jacob, and Leah my mother named me Judah, saying, I give thanks to the Lord, because he has given me a fourth son also. And she conceived again, and bare a son, and she said, Now will I praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah, and left bearing. Judah is the progenitor of the tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah is under the umbrella of the Israelite bloodline. Judah and his brothers are not the progenitor of the Israelite bloodline. Jacob is the progenitor of the Israelite bloodline. It takes two Israelites to transfer the Israelite heritage to their children. The Israelites who marry the strange woman and man cannot transfer the Israelite bloodline to their children. When it comes to the tribes within the Israelite bloodline, the tribe of every Israelite is determined by the father. The Most High do not want the tribes to mix. If you are from the tribe of Judah, the Most High want you to marry within your tribe. Because the Israelites are rebellious and stiff-necked, a law was put in place for the children born to the Israelites who marry outside their tribe. The statute the Most High made said the children born in the union of two different tribes will identify with the tribe of their father. This is the thing which the Lord doth command concerning the daughters of Zelophehad, saying, Let them marry to whom they think best only, to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. So shall not the inheritance of the children of Israel remove from tribe to tribe, for every one of the children of Israel shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. And every daughter that possesseth an inheritance in any tribe of the children of Israel shall be wife unto one of the family of the tribe of her father, that the children of Israel may enjoy every man the inheritance of his fathers. Neither shall the inheritance remove from one tribe to another tribe, but every one of the tribes of the children of Israel shall keep himself to his own inheritance. If a man of Judah marry a daughter of Zion from the tribe of Benjamin, their children will be Judah. If a daughter of Zion from the tribe of Judah marry a man from the tribe of Benjamin, their children will identify with the tribe of Benjamin. I repeat, no strange woman or man can make an Israelite. There is a lot of misinformation about the strange woman that is not a daughter of Zion having Israelite children. If an Israelite married a strange woman or man, they are establishing their own bloodline. 
the Most High warned his people not to marry the strange woman and men. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them, thy daughter. Thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and destroy thee suddenly. The scriptures in the Bible give us a little information about the sons of Jacob. The Apocrypha books will give you the background information about the sons of Jacob that the scriptures do not reveal. Israelites, when you read the Apocrypha books, use discernment and always listen to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Like the Bible, the so-called lost books of the scriptures are altered also. When Judah gathered his children to him, he revealed to his children about his life, as well as told his children what would happen to them in the last days. Judah married a Canaanite woman named Bashua. And when I went to him, I saw Persaba, king of Adullam, and he spake unto us, and he made us a feast. And when I was heated, he gave me his daughter Bashua to wife. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua, and he took her and went in unto her. Judah married Bashua, a Canaanite woman, when he was drunk. He did not get the permission of his father before he married the Canaanite woman. The father to Bashua was a king and he used money and wine to get Judah to take his daughter for a wife. When Judah married the Canaanite woman, he sinned against the Most High. After I had drunk wine, I reverenced not the commandment of God and I took a woman of Canaan to wife. The Most High did not want his people to intermingle with the Canaanites. The Canaanites were a cursed people, and the Canaanites descend from Ham. The Canaanites were wicked, and they worshipped all kinds of pagan gods. Isaac forbid Jacob and Esau from marrying a Canaanite woman. Esau did not listen to his father and married a Canaanite woman. Jacob took a wife from his mother's side of the family. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him, and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Arise, go to Padan Aram, to the house of Bethuel thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban thy mother's brother. The book of Judah revealed that Judah struggled with drunkenness, fornication, the love of money, and women. Judah revealed when he is drunk, he is not in his right mind and make bad decisions. While he was under the influence, he married Bashua, the Canaanite woman, and had three children by her. Judah said to his children he was aware that the Canaanites were a wicked people. And I knew that the race of the Canaanites was wicked, but the impulse of youth blinded my mind. And when I saw her pouring out wine, owing to the intoxication of wine, I was deceived and took her, although my father had not counseled it. Judah said he was young and blind when he made the poor decision of taking a Canaanite woman for a wife. The Most High killed two of Judah's sons for their wickedness. Judah's poor decisions continue while he was a drunkard. Judah's oldest son, Ur, whom the Most High killed, took a wife named Tamar. Bashua, Judah's wife, did not like Tamar simply because she was not a Canaanite. After Judah's failure to give his youngest son to Tamar for a husband, Tamar plotted against Judah. The book of Judah said Judah was under the influence when he saw Tamar. Judah thought Tamar was a prostitute, approached her for sexual relations, which result in a child. The Bible and the book of Judah give us an account about Judah's and Tamar's union that was against the will of the Most High. In the Israelite culture, what Judah did was an abomination. And after these things, while Tamar was a widow, she heard after two years that I was going up to shear my sheep and adorn herself in bridal array and sat in the city of Enaim by the gate. For it was a law of the Amorites that she who was about to marry should sit in fornication seven days by the gate. Therefore, being drunk with wine, I did not recognize her and her beauty deceived me through the fashion of her adorning. And I turned aside to her and said, let me go in unto thee. And she said, What wilt thou give me? And I gave her my staff, and my girdle, and the diadem of my kingdom in pledge. And I went in unto her, and she conceived. 
Judah revealed to his children at his deathbed that they were the children of Shelah, his only son that was not killed. His son Shelah married a Canaanite woman. His mother did not want her son to marry Tamar. She made her son marry a Canaanite woman behind Judah's back. For a long time, there was a doctrine circulating of Israelites not being African or the bloodline of Ham. Some Israelites, mostly in the camps, hated Africans. A lot of Israelites quoted the infamous Bible dictionary saying, not the Negroes. If you're from the tribe of Judah, your foundation began with an evil Canaanite woman, Judah, your father took for a wife. His only surviving son, Shelah, married a Canaanite woman as well. The Canaanites descend from Ham. She bare me Ur and Onan and Shelah, and two of them the Lord smote, for Shelah lived, and his children are ye. And while I was away, she went and took for Shelah a wife from Canaan. To the Israelites that look down on the seed of Ham, I will say to you like the Most High said to me when I judged Judah and later discovered I was from the tribe of Judah. Humble yourselves. Judah had many unclean spirits tormenting him and leading him astray. The spirit of jealousy, fornication, the love of money, as well as pride. Judah confessed to his children that wine turned aside his eyes and pleasure blinded his heart. In his sin, he lay with his late son's wife and married a Canaanite woman. The judgment for his iniquities from the Most High is that he would find no pleasure in his children. And the wine turned aside my eyes, and pleasure blinded my heart. And I became enamored of, and I lay with her, and transgressed the commandment of the Lord, and the commandment of my fathers, and I took her to wife. And the Lord rewarded me according to the imaginations of my heart, and as much as I had no joy in her children. Everyone will be tested, no one is exempt. Judah had his struggle with sin, like all people. The Bible said everyone have sinned and fallen short of the glory of the Most High. Judah did repent of his sins. He stopped drinking and eating meat until he was an elder. The Most High blessed Judah in many ways. The book of Judah reveals since his youth, Judah obeyed his father and mother. I was swift in my youth and obedient to my father in everything. And I honored my mother and my mother's sister. The scriptures said in the book of Exodus to honor your mother and father if you want it to go well for you. Judah understood the meaning of honoring his parents. Because he honored his parents, he was blessed. His father blessed him when he became a man and said he would be a king and prosper in all things. And it came to pass when I became a man that my father blessed me, saying, Thou shalt be a king, prospering in all things. And the Lord showed me favor in all my works both in the field and in the house. The Bible revealed the blessings Jacob bestowed upon Judah when he gathered his children to him before he transitioned to the afterlife. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Judah, thou art he, whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be, binding his foal unto the vine, and his ass's coat unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth white with milk. The book of Judah confirmed the kingship Jacob blessed Judah with. The book of Judah also revealed Isaac blessed Judah as well with the kingship. He received the kingdom because he was obedient to his father in all things his father command, he did. For even wise men among my sons shall they mar and shall cause the kingdom of Judah to be diminished, which the Lord gave me because of my obedience to my father. For I never caused grief to Jacob, my father, for all things whatsoever he commanded, I did. 
And Isaac, the father of my father, blessed me to be king in Israel. And Jacob further blessed me in like manner. And I know that from me shall the kingdom be established. Honoring your father and mother brings great blessings from the Most High. Today, this generation is disrespectful towards their parents and elders. Many Israelites and indigenous black people are missing out on great blessings because of their disrespectful ways. Many Israelites and indigenous black people can't get along. The spirit of division has overpowered the indigenous black people. The Most High gave Judah the kingdom for honoring his parents. Judah was a warrior. He was strong. Before there was a King David, Judah's descendant, Judah killed lions, bears, and other wild animals with his bare hands. I know that I raised a hen and caught it and prepared the meat for my father and he did eat. And the rolls I used to master in the chase and overtake all that was in the plains. And a wild mare I overtook and caught it and tamed it. I slew a lion and plucked a kid out of its mouth. I took a bear by its paw and hurled it down the cliff and it was crushed. I outran the wild boar and seizing it as I ran, I tore it in asunder. And a leopard in Hebron leaped upon my dog and I caught it by the tail and hurled it on the rocks and it was broken in twine. We read in the Bible of King David killing bears and lions by himself, like father, like son. Israelites, the angels are very involved in our everyday life. The angels carry out the will of the Most High. The Bible do not go in great details about Judah's strength. Judah would seize cities and fight entire armies by himself and win. When he went to war with his brothers and father, they would win the war because of his strength. His father Jacob had a vision about Judah. His vision revealed Judah had an angel of might that followed him everywhere he went. Therefore, my father was free from anxiety in the wars when I was with my brethren. For he saw in a vision concerning me that an angel of might followed me everywhere that I should not be overcome. Judah's strength came from an angel. Judah also fought against the seed of the fallen in his generation. The seed of the fallen continued to make an appearance throughout the generations after the flood. Judah swing heavy stones at his opponent and kill them. Judah and King David shared the same warrior spirit and had the strength to kill wild animals with their bare hands. And I wound my garment on my hand, and I slung stones at them, and killed four of them, and the rest fled. And Jacob my father slew Bilisath, king of all the kings, a giant in strength, twelve cubits high. Acre, the king, a man of giant stature, I found hurling javelins before and behind as he sat on horseback. And I took up a stone of sixty pound weight, and hurled it, and smote his horse, and killed it. The Messiah that comes from the tribe of Judah, from the lineage of David, that will deliver the Israelites when the time comes, is also a warrior and the chief warrior prince. Judah, David, and the Messiah have the warrior spirit. Most kings are warriors. That is how they defend their kingdom. The Most High has a way of setting the stage. Rome's Messiah is not like the Holy One of Israel that would deliver the Israelites at the end of Jacob's trouble. Judah warned his children and descendants to not take pride in their strength. Judah said, glorifying in your strength was evil in the sight of the Most High. And walk not after your lusts, nor in the imaginations of your thoughts, in haughtiness of heart, and glory not in the deeds and strength of your youth, for this also is evil in the eyes of the Lord. Judah prophesied to his children, commanding them to honor the Most High and obey his statutes and commandments. Judah revealed what his children would do in the last days. The prophecies Judah prophesied against his children are a sign on the tribe of Judah. Those signs will help you determine if you descend from the tribe of Judah. The Most High said he would gather Judah from the four corners of the world. The kingdom of Judah consists of the tribe of Benjamin as well. One of the many warnings Judah gave his children and descendants to stay away from wine and alcohol. And now, my children, I say unto you, be not drunk with wine, for wine turneth the mind away from the truth, and inspires the passion of lust, and leadeth the eyes into error. For the spirit of fornication has wine as a minister to give pleasure to the mind, for these two also take away the mind of men. 
But if ye would live soberly, do not touch wine at all, lest ye sin in words of outrage and in fightings and slanders and transgressions of the commandments of God, and ye perish before your time. In every Israelite neighborhoods, the workers of iniquity put a liquor store as well as a beer and wine store. These liquor stores are very successful in the Israelite neighborhoods. The liquor and wine stores are usually full of Israelites and indigenous black people buying wine and alcohol to have a good time. Judah warned his children that he made poor decisions under the influence of wine. The word of the Most High said in the Bible that no drunkard would enter the kingdom of the Most High. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. The tribe of Judah, as well as all Israelites, need a reality check. As the signs of the times are upon us, Israelites everywhere need to examine themselves to see if they are a part of the remnant. The time to take your salvation seriously is now. Another warning Judah gave his children and descendants, not to love money and lust after women. He said through those sins, he was led astray. Judah went on to say, by these two sins, his tribe will fall into wickedness. And now I command you, my children, not to love money, nor to gaze upon the beauty of women, because for the sake of money and beauty, I was led astray to Bathsheba the Canaanite. For I know that because of these two things shall my race fall into wickedness. The Bible said in the last days, the love of money will increase. Today on social media, every other post from Judah is money and material possessions. Judah said the love of money and fornication will withdraw you from the laws of the Most High. The love of money will make you ignorant and his children will not have compassion for their people. King Solomon's downfall was his many wives. Judah said to his children and descendants, the love of money leads to idolatry, a sin the Most High hates. The Most High warned King Solomon before he took the kingdom away from him that his many wives would lead him into idolatry. Solomon loved women, just like his father King David and Judah. Today, the Israelite nation is divided into two kingdoms. Israelites, I will keep teaching about the sin of idolatry until Israelites everywhere understand how great that sin is. My children, the love of money leads us to idolatry, because when led astray through money, men name as gods those who are not gods, and it caused him who hath it to fall into madness. For the sake of money I lost my children, and had not my repentance and my humiliation and the prayers of my father been accepted, I should have died childless. But the God of my fathers had mercy on me because I did it in ignorance. Judah continued to struggle with women. In the awakening, some Israelites used the word of the Most High to justify their love for the strange woman and men. They created a whole doctrine to support their lusts. History have a way of repeating itself. Judah command his children and descendants to love Levi. Judah said, do not exalt yourself over Levi or you will be destroyed. The Most High gave Judah the kingdom and to Levi the priesthood. Judah's kingdom is the earth and to Levi his kingdom is the heavens. Judah said to his children that they would be kings in Jacob. The Most High chose Levi to draw near to him. For to me the Lord gave the kingdom and to him the priesthood, and he set the kingdom beneath the priesthood. To me he gave the things upon the earth, to him the things in the heavens. As the heaven is higher than the earth, so is the priesthood of God higher than the earthly kingdom, unless it falls away through sin from the Lord and is dominated by the earthly kingdom. For the angel of the Lord said unto me, The Lord chose him rather than thee, to draw near to him, and to eat of his table, and to offer him the first fruits of the choice things of the sons of Israel. But thou shalt be king of Jacob. The Bible confirmed the Most High chose Levi and took Levi for himself. That is why Levi is not given an inheritance among the Israelites, nor is Levi considered a tribe in the nation of Israel. Judah revealed to his children that they would go into captivity. Some of his children would be rich by stealing other people's possessions. Judah revealed the Most High will bring division in the Israelite kingdom. When Solomon transgressed the laws of the Most High, the Israelite nation was divided into two kingdoms. Judah only had one tribe that followed him. The rest of the ten tribe followed Joseph. Judah said that there will be wars in Israel and his kingdom will end 
until the salvation of Israel comes. For as on the sea, just and unjust are tossed about, some taken into captivity, while some are enriched. So also shall every race of men be in thee. Some shall be impoverished, being taken captive, and others grow rich by plundering the possessions of others. And the Lord shall bring upon them divisions, one against another. And there shall be continual wars in Israel, and among men of another race shall my kingdom be brought to an end, until the salvation of Israel shall come, until the appearing of the God of righteousness, that Jacob and all the Gentiles may rest in peace. And he shall guard the might of my kingdom forever. For the Lord aware to me with an oath that he would not destroy the kingdom from my seed forever. The southern kingdom of Israel called Judah came to an end when the Israelites in the kingdom of Judah disobeyed the Most High and was scattered into all the kingdoms of this world. Just as Judah prophesied to his children on his deathbed. Today, the impostors the world recognize as the descendants of Judah are falsely claiming Judah's inheritance. Judah revealed to his children that his kingdom will end until the salvation of his people. The impostors are claiming Judah's inheritance are the wealthiest group of people in the world. They have a nation in the Middle East that is supposedly practicing the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. The Most High gathered the so-called Jews and gave them the right to return. The Most High gathered only them and left the rest of the tribes. The imposters control governments and they are the CEO of major corporations. They can have laws passed to protect them and nobody else. They can influence many to follow their abominations. How is that possible if Judah's kingdom ended until the salvation of the Israelites? I know that works and tribulation and poverty. But thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Judah said his children will practice witchcraft and idolatry. They will follow after the people that have familiar spirits and demons of error. Judah said the men of Judah will make their daughters singers and harlots and will mingle with the abominations of the Gentiles. The tribe of Judah certainly did mingle with the abominations of the Gentiles the abomination of Rome. So many cannot come out of her and her doctrines. Now I have much grief, my children, because of your lewdness and witchcrafts and idolatries which ye shall practice against the kingdom, following them that have familiar spirits, diviners and demons of error. Ye shall make your daughters singing girls and harlots, and ye shall mingle in the abominations of the Gentiles. A lot of Israelites are under the spells of Rome. Rome used familiar spirits, witchcraft, and idolatry against the people of the Most High. Most indigenous black people become millionaires and billionaires in the satanic entertainment industry. The music industry takes the leading role in destroying the people of the Most High. A lot of the raunchy music from our people is destroying the women, turning them into harlots, just as Judah prophesied. The influence of music from the indigenous black people is destroying the indigenous black community. Idolatry, witchcraft, and sorcery continue to be a problem in the Israelite community. A lot of Israelites use sorcery against themselves. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Judah prophesied to his children that the Most High will bring famines against them and pestilence. Pestilence are infirmities like the so-called pandemic, death by the sword, the slaughter of your children, the rape of your wives, and the plundering of your possessions, the burning of the temple of the Most High, the Holy Land will be wasted, and the tribe of Judah will be in enslavement among the Gentiles. For which things, saith the Lord, shall bring upon you famine and pestilence, death and the sword, beleaguering by enemies, and revilings of friends, the slaughter of children, the rape of wives, the plundering of possessions, the burning of the temple of God, the laying waste of the land, the enslavement of yourselves among the Gentiles. Our father Judah prophesied before his death that his descendants would be enslaved among the Gentiles. Everything the descendants of slave in the diaspora is experiencing today align perfectly with the testimony of Judah to his children. Israelites, it is important to research and ask the Most High to reveal to you his truth. The truth is written in the words of the Most High. 
This is why so many of the writings from our ancestors were destroyed or hidden from us. There's no denying who the descendants of Judah are with a testimony like the one from Judah to his children written many years ago. There's only one group of people that match the prophecy to the children of Judah. The ones the world recognized as the tribe of Judah are not. Israelites, the imposters, know they are not from the tribe of Judah. The imposters are trying to keep you from knowing and claiming what rightfully belongs to you. The Bible said they conspired against you to cut you off from being a nation. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Israelites, you don't need their approval to claim your bloodline and inheritance. Don't be afraid to correct the misinformation that is out there from the synagogue of Satan. Never in history have the impostors been enslaved in all the kingdoms of this world. Judah prophesied to his children that they will make some of the men of Judah eunuchs for their wives. And they shall make some of you eunuchs for their wives. Eunuchs is defined as a male that is castrated. Many Israelites were castrated during chattel slavery. Some are still being castrated until this day. I don't see the other species of mankind castrating the imposters. Judah said his descendants will go through all that he prophesied until his descendants repent with a pure heart and walk in all of the commandments of the Most High. Once the people of the Most High repent, their captivity will be reversed from among the Gentiles. Judah said after his children repent, then the Prince of Peace shall rise in Jacob. Judah said the Prince of Peace will rise from his seed. Some of us know who that is. A lot is still mesmerized by Rome. Judah said when the scepter to his kingdom shine again, the Messiah would deliver the righteous as well as the righteous Gentiles that call upon the Most High. Until the Lord visit you, when with perfect heart ye repent and walk in all of his commandments, and he bring you up from captivity among the Gentiles. And after these things shall a star rise to you from Jacob in peace. Then shall the scepter of my kingdom shine forth, and from your root shall arise a stem, and from it shall grow a rod of righteousness to the Gentiles, to judge and to save all that call upon the Lord. Judah said to his children and descendants that after all is finished, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will rise unto life. Judah and his brothers, the twelve tribes, Parchiac, will rise also, and they will be chief of the tribes of Israel. Hallelujah. And after these things shall Abraham and Isaac and Jacob arise unto life, and I and my brethren shall be chiefs of the tribes of Israel. Levi is first and Judah is second. Judah revealed the inheritance of the head of all the tribes in the kingdom. Levi first, I the second, Joseph third, Benjamin fourth, Simeon fifth, Issachar sixth, and so all in order. And the Lord blessed Levi and the angel of the presence, me, the powers of glory, Simeon, the heavens, Reuben, the earth, Issachar, the sea, Zebulon, the mountains, Joseph, the tabernacle, Benjamin, the luminaries, Dan, Eden, Naphtali, the sun, Gad, the moon, Asher. After all of this is accomplished, there will be joy in Jacob and everyone will serve the Most High. Judah again said to his children to observe the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. Judah instructed his children to hang on to the ways that please the Most High. Judah died at 119 years old. Observe, therefore, my children, all the law of the Lord, for there is hope for all them who hold fast unto his ways. And he said to them, Behold, I die before your eyes this day, a 119 years old. Israelites, everything you want to know, the Most High will reveal it to you. Some of our people must practice what the scripture said about being slow to anger and slow to speak. Nothing in the physical realm is as it seems. Truth will triumph over all enemies. The word of the Most High said the truth shall make you free. Don't be afraid to learn truth via the spirit of the Most High. You can't trust the heathens. The workers of iniquity inserted into the scriptures what they wanted. Little did they know the Holy Spirit would lead the anointed of the Most High to many other scriptures that will reveal the truth. 
The Most High said, heaven and earth shall pass away. His words will never pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. The Most High said, if you look for me with all of your heart, you will find me. Israelites, open yourselves to truth. The truth is what makes you free. Don't perish for the abominations of the heathens. In the last days, knowledge will increase. Before our culture was transformed into a religion and our heritage hijacked, we had order and structure in our nation. We had leaders and a way of life. Because the earth was given into the hands of the wicked and our people ceased from being a nation, lawlessness rule in the times of the heathens. We don't have to be partakers with them in their lawlessness. Judah, our father, spoke to his descendants. Are you going to obey the voice of our father or are you going to obey the voice of Rome? Israelites, choose ye this day whom you will serve. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt. And serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. 